Hello and good day to everyone. So in the previous lecture, we have got the understanding of seismic diffraction, why we need it and how to observe this diffraction and what is the need of seismic diffraction in geophysics. So in this section of the lecture, we are going to learn about diffraction imaging by separation method. So there will be two learning outcome of this lecture. So first learning outcome is to develop a workflow for diffraction preservation using separation method. So we are going to discuss two methods. And the second objective of this lecture is to apply the diffraction imaging and migration for getting the high resolution subsurface seismic. So I'm taking a, a very simple model for understanding the seismic diffraction and preserving them. So this is one of the um, models from, from Malaysian Basin. So we are expecting a small part of this model, which is highly fractured or faulted. So now we have take the models uh, from here. So if with a different velocity, 2000 meter, 2500, 3500 and 4500 meter per second. And the if you observe the reflect or the, there was an intrusion or there is uplifting here. And that's why we have the strata moving upward and we have the very steeply dipping fault. So uh, obviously for getting the data, we are using the finite difference modeling method. So which is following the wave equation. So from the two wave, wave equation, so we have this equation. And in here, if you look at the finite difference algorithms, which follows these principles. So the equation two and three are uh, actually derives from the Bussey and Weidel 1991. And the equation four, which is the core of uh, finite difference modeling is derived from equation two from here. And finally, we got this equation using the velocity as well. So uh, once we do the finite difference modeling, so we consider two different modeling methods. One is uh, constant velocity and the variable density. So in, in here, in this model, we use the different density, which is 2000, 2200, 2500, and 2700 gram per meter cube. And in a variable density, uh, as I discussed in the previous figure, so we have used the variable dense uh, velocity as well. And the acquisition parameter, so the distance was 1000 meter in, uh, in X direction, and our depth is 3000 meter, and dx which is the receiver interval was 10 meter and uh, uh, sampling interval was 2 millisecond and the frequency dominant frequency was 50 hertz so the algorithm one which is actually diff frequency filtering so in which we will be using a filter based on the uh, frequency filtering so if we look at the wavelength to the frequency equation can be defined as f is equal to v over f f is your frequency v is velocity lambda is your wavelength so and the if you look at the wave number wave number is um, denoted by k so it's actually um, inversely proportional to the wavelength so it means if you have the low wavelength you have the uh, low wavelength uh, less number of uh, wave number so the diff frequency filter was actually derived by the slope. So it was actually calculated based on dt over dx, which is equal to 1 over v apparent, apparent velocity of the data. So what were the steps to perform this uh, diffraction separation approach? So the first, we, we have the pre-processing to improve the data quality and stacking if we have applicable to do the stacking but we are using the zero offset data so we did not apply any stacking so then then we apply the Fourier transform to observe the spectrum then we design a filter on the basis of the reflector dip uh, which is actually dt over dx plane and then we apply the frequency filter so frequency filter is actually to remove to remove the to remove the horizontal reflector depending on the slope. 
So then finally, we apply the inverse Fourier transform to get back the results in the seismic diffraction section. So this is actually the um, after applying the uh, Fourier transform, so we can observe the FK spectrum of the seismic data, which shows the horizontal reflection energy at minimum wave number. So this is actually the reflection which is coming from zero wave number, and these are all diffraction. So then we define a filter based on the slope. I mean, we define a slope filter over here to remove this energy and we get the diffract diffracted energy in this data. Then we apply the inverse Fourier transform to get back this result. So this was actually the input, which was zero offset. So you can see the red arrow, which highlight the reflector. But in this data, you can see the reflection has been removed and only we have the preserved diffractions. And the second of, second uh, method, which we are using from formal to 2002. So in this method, actually what we do, we have the slope identification based on plane wave destruction. So the detail of this uh, derivation and the method is uh, given in formal 2002. So uh, in here, uh, what we do actually, we have the zero input uh, your model, then you have the zero offset synthetic gather, then this one is the previous example which we have shown using DF diffraction separation. And this one is the output of plane wave destruction. So just to compare these two methods, which method is better? So both method has their own accuracy, but here you can see in DFF, you can see a reflection is removed, but in here, this one was not considering as a reflection and reflection and keep as it is because the slightly dipping reflector. So that's why it keeps in the red. But in here, only the dipping reflector, which was this one, is kept and this was removed. So the another model which is used to apply the diffraction separation is a Marmousi model. So this is your input model. And this one is your zero offset stack section. Then you have the DFF frequency filtering and plane wave destruction filtering. So PWD, PWD diffraction separation has removed all the reflected energy because in DFF you can see this was the horizontal reflection, but it is preserved in the data set. But PWD, which is uh, which has accurately removed all the uh, reflection energy from the data and preserve only the diffraction. So let's see which method is better because from observation we, we don't know which one is better. So we have to do the quantitative analysis for this data. So for that purpose we actually plot the frequency spectrum of PWD and DFF. Uh, looking at this figure or the graph so you can look at this the plane wave destruction actually preserve the low amp frequency data which is from 0 to 10 hertz and with the better amplitude recovery but in dff the small the low amplitude data low frequency data does not preserve the accurate amplitude in the separated diffraction so with that all obviously these two methods are better for preserving uh, all the main frequency data which is from 10 to 50 hertz but in the case of complex geometry, the plane wave destruction behave properly, such as in the case of Marmosi model. But DFF, obviously for the simple model, this give the best result. So these two methods, either way, we can use it. So uh, the ultimate goal of diffraction imaging is actually to have the subsurface discontinuities in detail. So over here is one example from Look at All. So this one is actually the conventional imaging. So it's from the carbonate. Here you can see small classification, but it is not very clear. But when we do the diffraction imaging on this data set, so you can see a very tiny events inside this white or is in, inside this red circle, you can see a lot of small features can be identified. So if you can see on here, it's actually the classification, but here it's it's denoted as a um, black dot, but here you can see white and black, which is a better preservation of amplitude 
I'm not sure when you have the white, black, or the positive and negative amplitude recovery to identify the karstification property and the small channels or the carbonate buildups, all the things will be more accurate. So the diffraction imaging main objective is to image the small scale event such as fault, fracture, karstification, discontinuity, edges of the salt body. So these are the main objective of diffraction imaging. So this, this is a workflow uh, of the work which has been performed before. So in it's a very simple workflow to just for diffraction imaging. So uh, once we have the short gather data, we do the initial processing. And if you're applying in the stack data, then you can do stacking. Otherwise, it can be worked for uh, pre-stack data. So from the stacking, you can find the data slope and do the plane wave destruction to get the diffraction image. So similar stacking will you can convert into FKS transform, find the dip frequency filtering, and you can get the diffraction image section. section. So you can follow this um, article in SCG to get more understanding about the diffraction imaging. So with that's all, thank you so much.